Rogers TV. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. Welcome to Easy Eats. My name is Chef Yves Deshane, and today we're in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with Ahmed Popal, uh, newcomer uh, to to the country and to Fredericton. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the country. Welcome to Fredericton, and, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, and uh, my warm greetings to, to the, to the uh, viewers of your show, and uh, I'm so happy to be with, here with you, and uh, be a part of the kitchen today. Perfect. So, what are, what recipe are you sharing with us today, sir? Uh, I'm going to be um, cooking an Afghan traditional meal or a dish, uh, which has been popular in Afghanistan like for more than six decades. It's called Afghan pulao or Kabuli pulao, and um, it's a it's a meal that you know you can serve in even in breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Or, uh, you know, we normally back home, we normally make this uh, special dish for our uh, VIP guests and special occasions or, you know, holidays and Eids and all that stuff. Oh, fantastic. So before we get into that, let's learn a little bit about you. Uh, what made you decide to come to our country? Uh, mm, the, the thing is, uh, uh, Afghanistan was piling into the hands of extremists, terrorists. Um, I was here actually, I came to Canada back in 2011 and I was here for a, a short while and then I decided to go back home and serve there and I was offered a job there. So I went there and I stayed there until um, the Afghan government collapsed and then I had no way to, to stay there because I also used to serve for the Canadian Armed Forces back there and uh, that was a threat for me and uh, unfortunately uh, you know, it's a cooking show but I have to say I lost my dad and my younger brother because of me working there so they lost their lives there and then like um, I, I we had no future there especially my kids they, they weren't able to make it to the school to go to the school so you applied refugee status uh, or just through the natural channels the the government assisted program which was called uh, special immigration measures okay that's that's uh, where i came from so before when you said you came in 2011 when you returned to afghanistan did you come working for the canadian government or did you go back to work for the uh, uh, for the I Afghan government, uh, I uh, I started to work for the Afghan government, and uh, I also was um, uh, running a humanitarian program there. I was just you know voluntarily. I had a team, and I was donating bl blood to the people who were in real need, like you know, to just save their lives. So that's what I was doing beside my like you know formal job uh, or official job. Uh, that, that's what I was doing too. So I was donating blood to the people who were in need. Uh, that, that's, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this because I mean, I've never, I mean, and, and we're lucky here in Canada that we've never experienced war on our lands. We've sent people out to help and to liberate and, and all that stuff, but we've never experienced it. Um, how, I mean, I, we, I don't want to delve into it too much, but it must be difficult to live in fear all the time. How do you deal with that did you can you deal with it are you still kind of relieved and thankful that you're here now do you feel safer or is it still a worry oh. or do you with family do you still have family back there uh yeah i have uh, my two brothers there who also mm, used to serve for the canadian armed forces but unfortunately they didn't hear back and uh, i'm still trying to pull them out but the good thing is i made it here with my kids and um, I'm living in a safe uh, and uh, great environment. I, I'm loving Canada, and I hope my my kids and you know the future generation deserve for Canada since it's now their new home, and it's our homeland. So 
I'm, I'm really great to be here. You guys have been occupied for a long time. Oh, well, it's, it's been more than four and a half decades now. Wow, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, it generations growing up with nothing but, but war. But, that's but, but war and, you know, extremism and, you know, all those jihadi stuff which ruins, uh, you know, a community, a country and their future. Yeah. Well, let's stop talking about all of this, but let's talk about how beautiful your country is because I do see pictures and stuff like that. It, it's a beautiful country. And in what part of uh, Afghanistan do you come from? Uh, I come from uh, southwest part, which is called Kandahar, and Kandahar was uh, once the capital of Afghanistan, of great Afghanistan, where like 300 years ago, uh, where, uh, you know, we had some parts of Iran, you know, that was Afghanistan, and Half of Pakistan was Afghanistan. So, yeah, I come from Kandahar, well, where the Canadian whole mission was also there. So You said you worked for government, sir. So uh, what kind of responsibilities did you have over there? Uh, well, I had to work on different positions. I, uh, I used to work as a provincial chief of staff, uh, provincial director of uh, human resources. And then I was um, assigned as a, an advisor to the former president of Afghanistan in youth affairs. So now that you're here in Canada, what are your aspirations? What would you like to start doing? You know, mostly um, uh, interested to work on humanitarian stuff with the people, you know, that where I, it doesn't matter where, where I'm needed, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and, you know, thrilled to be working with them in. You know, so you're so working now with the with the Multicultural Association here in Fredericton to are, to assist newcomers? Is that, do I yeah, understand I, that right? Uh, uh, I work with them as a culture uh, broker right now, okay. just, you know, to, to uh, it's, it's good for me also, you know, to know the city and the environment, you know, and, you know, get into the community. So mostly I go to the schools in Fredericton, you know, if there is any issue with the Afghan students or newcomers, so I go there and, you know, uh, solve that pro problem. So I've heard that you started a new association here in Fredericton. Uh, what it's called the Afghan Community of Fredericton? Yeah, we decided to have an Afghan community where we can reach to the, the problems, you know, to whatever issues that the Afghans would face in the future. So I'm trying to work with the Afghans, especially with the, new, the newcomers, you know, to, to work with their kids, their, 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 their women and their families to get into a Canadian environment and, you know, respect everything and uh, do a lot of good stuff that Canada needs or expects from a newcomer, especially Afghan. So I have a, a, a background of experience with the Canadians you Absolutely, know, in yes. Western culture. So I'm still working with them, you know, to get uh, um, to everything with, with, with a possible and a good way that, you know, um, we, we, we are planning to have some, some events cultural events, that we're going to show some Afghan events to the Canadian communities, that we have some good uh, peaceful colors of life, like, you know, if, if it's food, cultural days. And then also I'm trying to work with the newcomers to respect the religious issues and all the, like, you know, the cultural issues that they have been new to, so they can, you know, merge into the community and live in a peaceful way. We'll be back after these few messages to make the Afghani Pulau. to this last race. She's too old. Eddie! Coming in there! The dogs are hell you're back! Get to it, man! Here's there's some kind of difficulty. Just once more, old girl. 
and you can rest. Her last race and still undefeated, the Blue Nose out of Lunenburg, Nova Scotia was fastest in the world for almost 20 years. Welcome back to Easy Eats. Again, we're in the Greener Villages Learning Kitchen with Ahmed Popal, and he's going to show us how to make an Afghan pulao. So what are the first steps, sir, on making this pulao? Well, well we're gonna, the first step would be to uh, chop an onion. Okay, so we've got our onion right here, and yeah, I can do that and for you. Uh, slice the, the carrots, and that's where we're gonna start from. Here we go. While you do the carrots, yeah. I'll do the onion. Okay, okay. And then uh, we'll, we'll just chat. Um, so you said that you're from Kandahar. Did you live in the city? I grew up in 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 Kandahar city. Okay. Where I was born in a, a really close uh, district to Kandahar. It's called Argandab okay. district. Canadians veteran might know that where Argandab is. Okay. It's a very green uh, um, uh, district, uh, and it's uh, very famous because of its pomegranates. It's pa okay. Well, that's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that's uh, like you know when you talk about Kandahar, uh, the pomegranates come first. Right on. So well, that leads me to my next question here. So uh, what kind of, other than pomegranates, what other kind of food can you, I guess, would, would uh, Afghanistan be known for? Uh, fruit, yeah. We, we have uh, pomegranates from Afghanistan. Yeah. Uh, grapes. Okay. Yeah, the best grapes we got back home. Now, what kind of climate, I guess, would you, uh, w would you associate, or I guess, where you grew up? Is there... Um, I know that there's some climates that could be extremely cold. Is it cold like here? Or uh, the the first coldest uh, winter I'm experiencing is, uh, experiencing is uh, right now in Fredericton. Wow. Because uh, we never get snow back where I live, where I come from. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we're in the south part, southwest part, and we, we get snow in the north, northern Afghanistan, but not in the southern. All right, so we've got our onions yeah. chopped. So we are gonna, uh, if you could please help me with the... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, so am I dicing these or am I slicing them really thin? No, uh, really thi thin, okay. like, you know, very, very thin slices so we can just fry them. There we go. So like this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, lovely. So you said this is a celebration dish. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, is there any kind of special meat that you put in here? And uh, today we were using chicken, but yeah, I mean, if you're celebrating, what would you do if you were if we were in Kandahar? Well, uh, we mostly uh, use uh, beef or lamb. Beef instead or of lamb, chicken. okay. But I was unable as uh, it's there's a, I see a shortage of uh, meat in Fredericton sometimes. Yes. Uh, uh, especially fresh meat. So what we do is like you know Afghans, uh, they don't use frozen. Uh, you know, food or meat or, you know, all that stuff. Now, is that a, uh, a cultural yeah. thing? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, if you freeze it, then the taste goes away. Well, so it, it changes, yeah. absolutely. You're yeah. right. So, um, I had to use beef. But uh, I didn't get beef, so I said, let's do chicken. With chicken. And you know what? That works out great because beef nowadays is really expensive. And, yeah. and your chicken legs are, I guess, more affordable to people than... Yeah, uh, exactly. Now, Ahmed, is this? A, do, do you follow? Uh, do, do you follow a, a, a halal diet? Is this? Uh, is this halal today? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So that, and then we're going to do a couple cloves of garlic, yeah. right? Uh, and, and not just to chop them. You know, we can just t uh, take the, the 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 skin out of it. Yeah. And that's it. Oh, that's it. We're yeah. just going to leave it whole. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wonderful. We'll just take the root out. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've got what, uh, what we call our mise en place or our prep together, what are the next steps? Uh, okay, the next step would be to put some oil in the pan. Okay, so how much oil would we put into uh, this? Can I put it? Yeah, yeah, go right ahead. You're, you, uh, I'm, I'm just doing all the grunt work. You're doing the cooking. Yeah. So we're putting so in probably, yeah. probably about a quarter cup or so. Yeah. Okay. And then now uh, we have to put uh, the onions. Onions in first? Yeah. Okay. Go and some, and then the bay leaves. Bay leaves. 
And bay leaves are great. They're uh, they're they're like a subtle flavor. It's yeah. one of those things where it gives you, a good taste. You don't really taste it, but yeah. it's if you yeah. if it's not there, you can feel the taste too. But I, I mean, guess that's you know, what it is. Yeah. Is you can feel the t feel the taste. There we go. So we're gonna bring these up and just kind of let them saute yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we we're gonna let it uh, uh, to to fry uh, for, for a little while, and then we're gonna add uh, uh, the chicken. Okay, and then the yeah. chicken we just add whole. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we fry the chicken. And then that's it. And then uh, we have to boil some water, and then okay, put perfect. all the stuff. Lovely. I notice on, on the on the uh, on the cutting board here, we've got our bay leaves. Yeah. We got a little bit of garlic, but those right there. Can you tell me what those spices are? I yeah, mean, black cardamoms. It gives a good smell uh, uh, to the to the rice. And uh, yeah, I don't know what do you guys call these. That's star, star anise. Yeah. Star anise. Yeah. So these all uh, also give a uh, good and better taste to rice, especially when you know you, you cook or make a rice dish, and uh, also gives good smell, good taste, and with the bay leaves, yeah, garlic. No, it seems pretty simple. I mean, the cardamom you usually see ground up, but yeah. uh, ground up uh, a lot of times it, it's overpowering. So it's kind of nice that the ho the whole and now and that being said as well is that here in Fredericton, uh, our our accessibility to spices like that yeah. have blossomed since we've had a, an influx of, of immigration into the city. Yeah. So we're seeing little shops pop up yeah. here and there yeah. that are specialty for Middle Eastern, yeah. for our Thai friends and yeah, stuff like that, Asians. which I think is fantastic, yeah. So now we're just cooking this until it, it, it just kind of yeah. smells nice, right? Yeah, uh, until it gets uh, its color changed. Okay. And so then we're going to uh, put the uh, chicken in it. You know, in Canada, what I mostly find is uh, fries, burgers, and pizzas, and all that stuff. But I mean, if uh, such an Afghan dish has been produced, we, which we do have back in Ontario and BC, so it's a great food. Like, you know, I mean, even we can use it for a breakfast. I don't, I know that uh, breakfast in Canada or Western world is different. Yeah. But, uh, you know, back in Afghanistan, uh, we we uh, we use eggs with a different style, fried eggs. Yep. Uh, we use uh, rice and you know vegetables for breakfast a lot of the time. So let's talk about that. I mean, are there? How do people get their food? Do, is it a lot of home cooking? And if people don't cook at home, is it is there many restaurants there, or is it more like street vendors and markets? There are a lot of restaurants, and there are like street foods uh, out on the corners in the city. Was but mostly like ninety nine percent people we cook the, their food in their homes. At home, so so when they uh, need uh, some food or whatever meal they, they desire to have. Uh, from outside, they just order it. But normally, like in daily life, they cook it themselves. So we'll get this chicken frying. Yeah. And then so once we yeah, get... So, let's, yeah, uh, let's put the chicken. Right there. Perfect. And you said that this can be done with, with any kind of meat. Oh, uh, yeah. And this yeah. can be, be done Beef vegetarian as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, vegetarians can use potatoes and all that stuff. But, you know, normally when it comes to Afghan pulao, it should be meat. It, sh it should be meat? Yeah, okay. Afghans love meat. Uh, oh, perfect. Okay, wonderful. We'll be back to finish this Palau right after these short messages. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. 
She was walking along the sides of the tracks and it shattered her world. <laughs>Welcome back to Easy Eats. So we've been super busy during the break and we've gotten all of our chicken done. We've caramelized these onions, we've rendered them down. And we've also fried our, our uh, carrots up with some sultanas or some, some raisins, um, which are really, really nice. And I think we're at the stage right now that yeah, we're going to, to change it, uh, sweep it to the swap it into. Okay, so we're gonna grab a pot. Yeah. And then we're just gonna mm -hmm. add all of that to the mix, are we? Yeah. We're gonna put that in there. And then we're gonna make sure we're gonna scrape all of that yeah. because that's all flavor, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Onions give good flavor to the food, so. Oh no, absolutely, I, I say that. That's and one of my favorite the color. foods, for sure. So during the break as well, uh, I bet we were talking about uh, what you were thinking of doing now that you're here, and we were talking about uh, maybe opening up uh, a food stall yeah. or a food truck. Tell me a little bit about that. What, what, what were you planning on doing and what kind of dishes were you thinking of sharing with us? Uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be trying to uh, give some, some fast food, but you know, Afghan pulao is a takeaway food meal. Yeah, we're gonna put that. All right, okay, that. So now we're adding this, perfect. Yeah. So, t so, so Afghani takeaway or fast yeah, food is yeah, what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. So what, what would that be? What kind of dishes would, would we see you uh, offering? Uh, just uh, an Afghan style burger. Okay. With beef in it, uh, like, a, like a, we call it a kebab, chapli kebab. Okay. Beef and cheese and all that stuff, a different burger. Okay. And two kind of fries. One would be like, you know, just normal rice, with Afghan pulao, and the other would be biryani rice. Okay. Which would be spice. And biryani is more uh, Indian leaning, right? It's, so it's you're, Asian food. It's like, Asian, you know, yeah. We, we, you can get that in Pakistan, Afghanistan, India, you know, everywhere. So now we're gonna add uh, our rice. Okay. And uh, can I have some water? Absolutely, I've got some water right here behind you. So we're using water today, but you could use chicken stock or chicken broth yeah. or, or beef broth if you wanted to. So how much are we adding? Uh, we're gonna add the water until it comes on top of the rice. Just yeah. on top? Yeah, that's it. All right, that's so it. just like that, just to cover. That's okay. it, yeah. The reason I ask is because every culture, everybody has a different way of cooking yeah, rice. Exactly. So I wanted to make sure that we have a ratio. So it's not a two to one, yeah. it's just basically just and what's on top. And now we're gonna add these uh, spices. Okay. So once it's uh, boiling, it will give the food a different color. Uh, uh, different, taste. absolutely. Smell. So you're not, yeah. you're not roasting these pods yeah. or anything. Yeah, I'm gonna have the garlic. A whole garlic? Yeah. A whole glove of garlic. So you yeah. And is that? That's it. Just like that, and then we cover yeah, that? Yeah, we cover it, uh, like, and uh, it will sit for, for almost uh, the 45 minutes, and then it will be ready. So 45 minutes in the pot, just like yeah. this, or do you slide it in the oven? Uh, I just have to steam it, like, you know, wherever, you know, uh, once it's bo boiled, then we can steam it. Okay, so you bring it up to a boil, Yeah. you yeah. turn it down to low? Yeah, to low, and then we steam it and uh, sit it for an hour. So I noticed that you put a whole clove and you didn't peel it or anything like that. Um, I know that when I make stocks and stuff like that, it permeates flavor, but for those who don't, um, the whole clove, so this is traditional? Uh, yeah, it, it's actually like, you know, uh, when it's steamed, like, you know, with it's boiled, yeah. and, and the rice is steamed and it's been sitting like for one hour, it gives the, the, the rice and the, the whole Afghan pulao a very good taste and smell of garlic. Perfect. But you can still, you know, then eat the garlic with, 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 with spoon, with, with rice and everything. Oh, okay, so you can pull this out and yeah, then, and then yeah. use it after. Yeah. Okay, no, yeah. wonderful, that's, that's awesome. And with the spices, because they're big and they're chunky, we'll pull those out and they yeah. will be part of the dish, right? They, they would be, you, you can just have it like, you know, for the decoration of the meal. Okay, and, but, yeah. you know, But not necessarily to no, eat, you no, can no. pull that out. Yeah. And the same with the garlic, it could just be flavor. Yeah, for, yeah. So for yeah. those yeah. Yeah. It gives don't. very good flavor and, you know, very good smell to the dish. Wonderful. No, that's awesome. So everything is boiling. We have everything covered. Um, Ahmed, uh, like Ahmed said, it takes about an hour for, for this to, to 
be done. So he was gracious enough to make one ahead of time for us so we can see the finished product. So I'm going to pull that out of the oven right now. Wow, beautiful dish, just like that. You see all the chopped um, uh, the carrots. carrots that we did later? Okay, yeah. And then raisins and, you know, color up the, the onions on the rice. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and chicken. No, that, that's lovely. This is a beautiful dish. And you said that this is uh, for celebrations. For celebrations. For VIP right. guests. Yeah. yeah. Um, would this be something that you would just on special occasions? We could eat this every day. So it's a very strong dish. You know, yeah. when we, especially when, use, uh, when we use uh, beef or yeah. lamb. So, I mean, you know, it, uh, Afghans are like, you know, um, they don't have a good uh, economy and uh, financial life. So sometimes, you know, we just make this once a week, like, you know, for the kids and who, like, you know. So like a, a Sunday yeah. dinner yeah. sort of yeah. thing yeah. to get together with family. Yeah. So I guess would the dish show the prosperity of the family? Yeah. So the more meat in, in this, oh, the, yeah. the richer the family? Yeah. Not the richer the family, but that means that the kindness of the family. I think I'm going to give this a try if you want to join me. Yeah, sure. sure and sure. then uh, yeah. I'm always, this is my favorite part of every episode. So I'm going to try to get a little bit of everything. Just like that. Mm. No, this is really nice. It's subtle. It's nice and earthy. And then those raisins give it a really, really nice sweetness to yep. it. Thank you so much, Ahmed, for, uh, for sharing this dish with us, for sharing a little bit about your, your life in Afghanistan and what you did and, uh, and a little bit about your culture. Thank you so much for joining us today. And it, was, uh, it was a pleasure of uh, mine. To, to be a part of your show and, you know, to represent an Afghan meal dish. And, yeah, long life Canada. Right on. And, and hopefully we'll see some of uh, this being offered soon in, at a farmer's market or in a stall or in a food truck uh, nearby. I hope, I hope that happens soon. And I'm trying to work on this, like, you know, daily to, to represent an Afghan food to the Canadians, and they will really love it. I'm sure they will. Just a couple of these bites and, and I'm sold. As soon as you open up, I'll be your first customer for sure. Thank you You're so welcome. much. Thank you. Thank you. Connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com. My name is Chase Nicholas. I am a Mi'kmaq hockey player. Growing up, I always remember my family talking about the Mi'kmaq as the creators of the game of hockey. In grade 7, I did research on Mi'kmaq hockey sticks as the first sticks of the NHL. I found a Mi'kmaq hockey stick made in 1917, the same year the NHL was formed. I was surprised to find out the very stick I was holding was made by my great-great-grandfather, Alexander Cope. In 1934, an elder known as Old Joe Cope wrote a letter to the Halifax Herald claiming the Mi'kmaq created hockey. I found out later that I am a direct descendant of Old Joe Cope. There was a time when Mi'kmaq children were torn from their families and not allowed to speak their language, losing their words and stories, but the stories are coming back to us. Stepping on the ice, I take pride knowing the roots of the game of hockey stem from my ancestors in the Mi'kmaq Nation. Public transit, garbage pickup, parks and recreation programs, snow removal on your street. How can you stay informed about these and other important local services? Tune to City Council coverage on Rogers TV. See your community leaders at work on Rogers TV City Council coverage. This is Rogers TV. Man, is there a lot of pressure on this young fighter here tonight? Fighting is life. This is my belt. I earned this in blood, paid in full. This is mine. Everyone gets knocked down, but fighters get back up. You cannot break me, I promise you. Adversity is the road to victory. Sacrifice is the price for glory. The very struggle for survival is 